This video is about a soil's cation exchange capacity. I'm going to start with explaining what is a salt. You may know salt as something like table salt, which is sodium chloride, but the definition of a salt in chemistry is more general. It's a neutral compound that consists of a positively charged ion and a negatively charged ion, and those positive and negative charges cancel each other out. What is an ion? It's just an atom or a molecule that has some kind of electrical charge to it. The positively charged ion is called a cation, and the negatively charged ion is called an anion. If you have difficulty remembering, cation has a T in it. A T looks like a plus symbol, and it's positively charged. And salts are very soluble in water, so if you mix a salt into water, those two ions will separate, and they're free to then associate with other ions. The study guide doesn't cover soil colloids, but I want to go over them quickly. They're the smallest soil particles that exist, and they're so small that you're not going to see them without a very powerful microscope. But because of their size, they also have very high surface area, and they're very reactive and have chemically charged surfaces. Some examples of colloids are the smallest clay particles and humus. Their high surface area and electrical charge means that they can hold on to all sorts of things like water, nutrients, toxins, pesticides, things that both help and hurt plants. Generally, their surfaces are negatively charged, which means that they're going to attract positively charged ions, aka the cations. Where are these cations coming from? Remember that there's always some degree of water that's held in the soil, whether it's available for plants to take up or not. So you have a little bit of a sphere of water around each soil particle surface. Because it's an electrical charge, those ions are held tightly enough that they're not going to be leached out of the soil, but it's not so tight that plants can't take them up or they can't be switched with a different ion. This diagram is an example of that. This specifically is showing a type of clay that has a very flaky layered arrangement. That's why you have multiple surfaces here. But you can see that there's some positively charged ions already attached to that surface. And just beyond that, you have other positively charged ions, cations, that are in the soil solution. You can see here that there's cations that are on the surface of the particle that then exchange with the ones in soil solution. If you're having some difficulty wrapping your head around this, think of it like a bar. The surface of that particle is the actual bar, and the cations are the people who are trying to get a drink. They can come and go as they please, and they do come and go. And when they move away, they get replaced by somebody else. And that's the same idea with these cations. The cation exchange capacity is a total exchangeable cations that a soil can hold. You can see in this diagram that sandy soils are all the way at the bottom. They're not able to hold very much. And as you continue going up, humus is the most powerful and has the greatest cation exchange capacity. The cation exchange capacity is a really important property because it represents how many nutrients, pesticides, things like that, that can be held in the soil. The higher your CEC, the more nutrients are held for plants to take up. For damaging things like toxic substances, those things can be bound in the soil until microorganisms start breaking them down. 